Welcome to this week's service of the Des Moines United Methodist Church. As always, it is good to have you here with us. July is just around the corner, so mark your calendars for July 11th. We are finally going to be able to come back into our church and worship in the sanctuary. Ray is making sure that everything is clean and safe for you to come back. So we look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, let us begin our virtual worship. Hear these words as a call to worship this morning. Life is meant to be an adventure. Let us celebrate the richness and diversity in life in the presence of God. May we create here a circle of God's love where all are welcome. A circle ever expanding, ever growing, a place of wisdom, a place of connection, a place of hope. For, lang for love is God's language. Let us worship. Welcome to Time with Young People. I'm so happy you chose to spend time with us today. Have you ever been sick? How did you feel? Maybe cold or hot, tired or sore? Maybe you couldn't breathe well or felt like you were going to throw up. Who looks after you when you're sick? It's nice to have someone that loves you take care of you, isn't it? What helps you get well again? Medicine? Maybe chicken soup? There is a Bible story about a girl who was very sick. She was 12 years old. We don't know this girl's name, but we know the name of her father. It was Jairus. He was an important man, the leader of a synagogue or church in a town on the Sea of Galilee. How do you think Jairus and his wife felt when their daughter got really sick? Jairus believed that Jesus could heal his daughter's illness, so he went to ask Jesus to come to his house. Jesus could see the sadness and worry in this dad's face, and he could also see the deep trust the man had in Jesus. Jairus knew that Jesus could heal people. They started to out to go to the man's home. But before they had gone very far, some messengers came to say that Jairus' daughter had died. Jesus put his arms around Jairus. Jairus looked deep into Jesus' eyes and somehow knew that this was not the end. They continued to walk on to the house. Jairus trusted Jesus. As they reached the house, they could hear the crying and sad lament songs of the neighbors. This was a special way that people in those days showed their sadness and that they cared about the family of the person who had died. 
Jesus told the people that the little girl was only sleeping. Many of the people laughed at Jesus. Jesus went in to where the girl lay and said, Little one, get up. The girl opened her eyes, then sat up, then stood up and started walking around. How do you think her mom and dad felt then? How do you think the neighbors who laughed at Jesus felt? How do you think the little girl felt? How do you think Jesus felt? Everyone just stood there looking amazed. Finally, Jesus said, why don't you get her something to eat? I think she must be pretty hungry. Sometimes when I think about what death will be like, I think of this story. I imagine Jesus taking my hand and saying, get up. And I stand up and walk with him into a new life. That helps me so that I do not have to be afraid of illness or death. I know that God is with me, and I know that God is with you. Amen. Have a great week. Genesis 32. 22 to 32, Jacob wrestles with God. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched and he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him and passed Peniel and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Okay. Acts 3, 1, 9, Peter heals a lame beggar. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, all three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God. The Word of God for the people of God. Do you remember the days when you truly believed that you could get cooties 
from touching someone of the opposite sex. This morning, I want to finish the sermon series on the five languages of love. We've talked about quality time, words of affirmation, gifts and acts of service, and today we're talking about the gift of physical touch, the love language of physical touch. About 75% of you probably jumped to that definition of the love language of physical touch as being one of sexual intimacy. In a culture where sexual exploitation and sex trafficking is very common, more than we want to admit, I want to say that the true expression of love being physical touch always benefits the person who is being touched. Another way of touching, any other way of touching that is not to the benefit who, of the person who is receiving it and only motivated by personal individual satisfaction is not an expression of love. And it is truly not an expression of God's love. Now, we all know people who say, I'm a hugger, and then they grab you and hug you. I want to say to anyone, permission needs to be asked. As a pastor, I have many times received some very uncomfortable hugs. But I also want to say, we should not let our fear or our concern keep us from speaking an authentic language of love of physical touch. Nothing is more wonderful than receiving a hug that has been given in genuine love. And in this past year where we have been isolated or slowly walked back outside our doors, never in my entire life would I think I would be jumping up and down and treasuring the fact that I could elbow bump with someone or maybe even at some point shake their hand. You see, the language of physical love gets translated all the way through the Bible as one of God reaching and loving us. Now, the story we told today, we told two stories, and one of them I want to talk about is the story of Jacob. The Old Testament story is a great story of how God touched someone physically. Jacob is wrestling with the angel all night long. Now, if you go back and read the story of Jacob, you begin to understand that Jacob's story is a lifelong story. And when this happens, it's kind of later on in his life. Early in his life, he stole his birth, his, the blessing and birthright from his older brother, and that broke their relationship. And Esau left. Now, at this point in time, Jacob is traveling with his family and he finds himself alone and an angel of God comes and they wrestle all night long. And actually, Jacob is winning the wrestling match because the angel asked Jacob to let go. And Jacob says, no, not until you bless me, not until you name me. And so the angel renames Jacob Israel. Jacob then makes a place of worship, and he calls it, which we would translate into, I have seen God face to face, and my life was preserved. It's a great story because I believe we have all wrestled with God. Haven't you ever had that restless night? You felt like you were wrestling with God over an issue in your life? and then wake up the next morning only to have to face your really greatest fear, which is exactly what happens to Jacob. After that night, he wakes up and he sees his brother Esau approaching him with 400 men. If I were Jacob, I would be shaking in my boots. And the story says that Jacob bowed down seven times, that wonderful number of seven. And what happens? Esau comes running to him and hugs Jacob. The scripture says they fell, he fell, his, fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept together. That physical touch of love brought reconciliation to them. Especially it comes when God's love is at the center. Now the second story comes from the Gospel of Matthew. 
And it's a story that Jesus comes down from the mountainside and it reads like this. The large crowds were following him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the man was cured of leprosy. You see, leprosy is a contagious disease. Those with leprosy in Jesus' time were cast out of social life. You could not touch them. They were cast out and had to live far away. And if they were walking through town, they had to yell out to everybody, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, so no one would come by them. And clearly there was no physical contact. If you do any reading of the five languages of love, Dr. Gary Campbell makes a comment that states, if someone is not touched, we know in children that can impede their emotional development. We know it makes them feel unloved. If someone is untouched, it makes them feel insecure about their relationships. It makes them think something's wrong with their relationship. Something's wrong with them. It empties their emotional love tank. I can imagine the leper that Jesus met in Matthew felt unloved, felt desperate to be healed, desperate to go home and have someone just hold his hand. And what I want you to see in this was how important Jesus' touch was to his healing. He not only healed him, but he touched this man. Jesus could have spoken him clean. Jesus could have said, go down to the River Jordan and wash seven times. Jesus could have probably waved his hand over and he would have been clean. But the scripture specifically tells us that Jesus touched the man and the man was healed. There is great power in touch. There is great care in touch. There is great love in touch. I imagine that the world around Jesus was just as shocked that he reached out and touched. Just as the world, when I was growing up in 1991, was totally shocked by the picture of Princess Diana touching an AIDS patient without the royal gloves. Reaching out at the beginning of that disease and touching someone. Or the other real life story that we know about is how important touch was to Helen Keller. How when she finally figured out that the touch in her hands brought Helen into the world, it was life changing. There are so many different things that can be communicated through touch. The language of physical touch is unique because it can be understood by a simple tap. We know that you are expressing your love with a very small act of holding a hand. Touch communicates the emotion of love. Touch communicates value to the person. Touch communicates acceptance. Touch communicates security and assurance. Touch can communicate an apology. Touch can communicate compassion or sorrow. Touch gives respect. Touch says thank you when words are not needed. That's part of what we missed so much in the last year is the inability to touch someone in true love. I have been using this sermon series to ask the question, how do we deepen our life with God by understanding these love languages? So my question to us this morning is, how does God touch you? Think about it. God's touch sometimes is when someone else reaches out and touches us. Or sometimes the wind or the sunlight, or sometimes the gift of the pet that you have at home. Nothing makes me feel more loved than when I get home at night and my puppy comes running in and just jumps all over me. God touches us through our dreams at times and our actions. 
God touches us through Jesus and through the church, through the community of faith. I believe that God desires to have us touch God back, to feel the presence of wind, to understand sunlight as a gift, to feel the touch of a hand, and in giving the gifts of affirmation and time and service, we are ask, we are those are ways in which we are touching God. One of the purposes of my sermon series was to help us think about our relationship with God. How can we deepen that relationship using our primary language? A second person, the purpose of the sermon series was to deepen our relationships with one another. So I'm gonna end this sermon series thinking out of the box. Instead of some last words or blessing, I want to share a short video that talks about loving. Amen.
Dear God, our hearts are broken for this world. The hatred is palpable, the division undeniable, and the pain runs deep. We desperately need more of you. We ask for your truth to be louder than the noise which surrounds us. For your mercy to be stronger than the voices of oppression. For your strength to overpower those who seek to do harm. Where there is division, bring unity. Where there is anger, bring peace. Where there is evil, bring victory. Empower us to fulfill your mission, to answer your calling, to be the light you've created us to be. May your love, your grace, and your mercy flood this world. We love you. We seek you. We place our hope in the mighty name of Jesus. This we pray. And as your sons and daughters hear us as we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us love comes the invitation from the beloved community, a community following Jesus so long that defined their whole beings by it. Let us love little children. They encouraged each other as if this love was something that was yet unknown and needed to be practiced like a baby carefully watching the footsteps of others until she finally discovers her own feet can move in this way, wobbly and imperfect, but still walking, still following in the way. Let us love little children, not in word or in speech, but as if our whole bodies are learning this new grace. Let us be bold in learning this new movement, for we will falter, and it won't be perfect, just as we are not perfect. Little children, it will feel new and awkward, and it should. It should feel strange to twist and turn our bodies into love's possibility, to learn how to love in the way of Christ, who is still trying to encourage us to love one another. Let this be what defines us now, in this moment. Not so that they will know that we are Christians, but so that we know who that God's love abides. God's love abides in me. God's love abides in you. I am in you, and you are in me. And this changes everything. That is our prayer right now, that we will come to believe enough that God's love abides in us and be so changed. O oh Christ, may it be so.